Welcome to part 3 of the Stone Axe Shells where I talk about the big box games starting with Mage Knight. Now I've not played this a great deal yet, I've not really had the chance, I've got it second hand and um, it's great. Um, yeah, fascinating. Um, I like the presentation. I'm going to open it. I'm going to pause so I don't knock the camera again. I really like how this is organised. Um, you've got all your land tiles here, all your cards here, all your tokens sorted into their different sorts and sizes, all your minis in this section. And this kind of layout I've found, it, it makes setup so much easier. <laughs> you know, it's all neatly sorted away. Got this stuff here, these little tokens. and. Uh, these bits under here, the crystals and whatnot. There you go. All nicely organised, making it a lot quicker to set up than you might think. Um, there are other games which are a lot take a lot longer than this to set up. Uh, even uh, a lot lighter games take a lot longer. But um, like I say, I've not played it much, but um, a very impressive, uh, very impressive looking game. I've not got the expansions or anything. I think this set will be plenty. I've printed off some solo scenarios from Board Game Geek, and I, I think I'll be fine with this. I don't need the extra stuff. But um, a very impressive game, Mage Knight, which I've not played a lot. I'll just emphasise that. I've not played it much. I've tried to find my way with it and had a, a go of the starter game the introductory game. That's all I've done um, and I enjoyed that but I can't say that I've played a big old epic you know series of games with it so uh, Mage Knight. Runebound another epic quest game um, but very different in style um, very uh, lots of rolling dice uh, whereas um, uh, Mage Knight is very uh, card driven with just a few dice. Uh, I've got a few expansions for Runebound, a few of the uh, adventure variants I've gone for, and a couple of the um, equipment and things, but mostly, mostly adventure uh, expansions. And um, I've played the base game adventure a lot. I played the um, adventure where there's lots of giants. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember which one that was. Uh, Avatars of Kelnoff, maybe? I can't remember. But um, I really enjoyed the giant one, especially. Um, the thing I found find a bit tricky about it is the getting the timer right. You know, I've had I downloaded a, a timer from Borgia and Geek and I adapted it a bit and I started using the um, four card, the, the in-game timer but with moving up after four cards rather than two and you know it's, it's just tricky to find the right balance when, when it comes to the threat track so um, that's a, th a thing I found a bit difficult with Runebound but if you have a whole Sunday free then uh, it's a fun old game to try. This, of course, is the second edition, and uh, I, re I really like the second edition. I, I watched reviews for the third, and I thought I think the second will be best for me. Uh, the miniatures are not the best; they're okay. They're okay for this game, but generally you wouldn't um, necessarily. I wouldn't want to paint them up and use them in an RPG because they're a little bit smaller than usual and not not as well detailed. It's not a game I play very often because it's so huge and sprawling and can take hours, but um, it, is, it is a game I really like. The other Fantasy Flight game on this list is Fallout. Um, I'm just getting to grips with this. I've got the new California expansion as well to add extra monsters and characters. The thing I find difficult is 
that I'm struggling to get to grips with is the uh, card library. The uh, many, many numbered cards. Hang on, that's it. Um, you start off with two decks of encounter cards for settlements and ruins, and you add numbered cards depending on which quests you complete. And it's just a, a, a difficult um, concept for me to get to grips with. And when you start off one of the bunkers, you start off with one card and then it, it starts to build into its own deck and it's just it's just a bit confusing. And another thing I don't like is the learn to play and the rules reference. I hate it when they do this because you, you start off with a half-baked half game basically and then you have to refer to this to actually figure out what's going on and I really don't like that fantasy flight. I really hate it but it looks like an interesting game. The miniatures which I will find for you are really chunky and really fantastic. But I'm, I'm struggling to get to grips with it. That's the basic um, thing I'm telling you right now. <laughs> yeah, so I hate the um, yeah the starter thing and the rules reference. Learn to play and the rules re reference. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But I hope to be able to get to grips with the game itself. Um, there's a lot, a lot of interesting stuff about this game. But I... I haven't got to grips with it yet, so I can't recommend it. But um, yeah, a lot of interesting stuff. We'll see. We'll see how that one goes. It's it's taken me an awful long time to try and figure it out. <laughs> Obsession. This is another game like Runebound, which I don't play very often because it's so it's just so involving. Um, it looks gorgeous on the tabletop. There are a lot of components with it. There's a new expansion coming out. Um, the components are wonderful. I won't get it out because there's an awful lot in here. There's some, some amazing wooden meeples for your uh, staff, your household staff, and you are basically the you you are running a um, a country estate. You're trying to improve its prestige by holding events and encouraging other members of the aristocracy to come and visit your estate and uh, participate. They can give you money and uh, improve your image. And uh, it's a good game. It's a great game. Um, honestly, I'm not sure about the AI yet. It seems very random. Um, one, one game I had, I, I found it really difficult to keep up with the AI. The other game I had I absolutely trounced the AI so I'm not sure how swingy the uh, AI is but um, it's a great looking game and the components are gorgeous and um, it was written by somebody in the US and uh, I live in I don't live far from Derbyshire where it's set actually and I thought yeah that reminds me of Elveston Castle you know it, um, it, it really feels authentic for someone who actually lives here uh, not very far from uh, the place where this is uh, set. So, uh, gorgeous looking game. Um, I'm not sure about how swinging the AI is. And there's a new expansion coming out, um, which might be on Kickstarter, including an updated version of the base game. So, uh, so there you go, Obsession. Whenever in a weak moment I think about getting Gloomhaven, I think, well, I've got card-based combat in Mistfall and Hot of the Mists. Um, it took me so long to get to grips with Mistfall. It's a very fiddly game. You get a nice selection of characters with it. Uh, I've taken the inserts out. These uh, location tiles are just absolutely wonderful. Um, you get loads of cards, loads and loads of cards. Both these games are incredibly cheap on Amazon at the moment, in the UK at least. Uh, you get quite a few interesting quests. Um, Heart of the Mist updates the game a bit, 
Um, it doesn't use the time cards, which Mr. Ford does, and I, I quite like the time cards. But uh, this uses a different method to um, move time on, and has a, a few other little little streamlined bits. But I, I still enjoy the the original game, um, and I, I play that more than this. Uh, even though you know, this you get extra characters, extra quests, and loads of more gorgeous location tiles. And they're they're both pretty cheap at the moment, so um, it took me so long to even start to get to, to get to grips with these games. I've never won either of them, um, but I do enjoy playing them. And uh, I came so close last time, but I kept forgetting this guy gets an extra defense whenever he um, uh, blocks damage with his shield or his armor. He gets an extra point of defense. And I kept forgetting that, so maybe, maybe, just maybe, that's why I lost the last game I played. But um, very fiddly, but very cheap at the moment. And um, the artwork's gorgeous, and I, I love the setting. I, I, I'm an absolute sucker for this, um, the Mistfall universe. And I've got Shadowscape and Chronicles of Frost because, yeah, I was just totally suckered in by it. But um, just an intriguing game. You are going out into the wilderness, having fights with the monsters, and trying to get to the uh, object of your quest and defeat the the big bad or whatever. Um, I like it. I'm weird, but it did take me an awful long time to uh, get to grips with it. <laughs> now this would have been in my small box or maybe medium box collection, um, episode one or two, if it wasn't for the fact that I've got the collector's box. Escape the Dark Castle. This collector's box is ridiculous. It's huge. It's unnecessarily huge, but this game is very much a matter of taste. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's like a choose your own adventure kind of thing, but with cards and all these silly components. Lots of dice. Very random. Um, you can end up getting lots of different bosses and chapter cards to go through, like this one, and all sorts, uh, lots of different characters and companions you can come across, sorry I'm going out of focus, and lots of item cards. The one thing I don't like about this collector's box is that the, uh, the bit on top here keeps coming adrift of the cards and it's really irritating. Perhaps I'm doing something wrong. There we go. But uh, you, even get, you can even collect three start cards. Um, I've got all the expansions because I'm a nutter. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to get Escape the Dark Sector because seriously I've got plenty here. It will keep me very occupied. Um, oh, I really hate this thing. Um, <laughs> Lots of dice, and uh, each of which represents a character, or the chapter dice which you're fighting against, and there are various different items you can come across. But the base game contains quite a bit. Um, as I've said in my video I made about this, the expansions are quite thematic, they're very strongly tied into a particular theme. The Kickstarter expansion, which you can get from the Themeborn website, is really good. It adds lots of different extra cards and um, the game is still reasonably priced from the Themeborn web website not so much on eBay but if you can get it from the actual Themeborn website you can get it from a set for a, a good price still and this collector's box is surprisingly cheap even though it's knocking the camera out of the way sorry about that but it's huge and ridiculous let's get the dark castle and probably the game, the game system I play the most, and uh, the game that killed Star Saga for me, is the Dungeons and Dragons Adventure System. The first three games uh, work brilliantly, uh, as you know. Each one can be a standalone adventure. You're, you're following a story, but each one, you know, you start each game on its own in a way, and. Uh, 
loads of miniatures, loads of tiles. Each adventure you play will be different every single time. Because you have loads of tokens. Sorry, I've not the camera. Loads of miniatures. Some good boss monsters in each uh, in each box. Each each of these games is compatible with all the others. Loads of dungeon tiles which make every game different because you set them up differently every time. It's a, a random drawer apart from the particular location you need to complete the mission, but you never know when exactly that's going to come up. Castle Ravenloft, it's great for your horror stuff and your undead monsters. Loads of miniatures, loads of adventures, about 13 adventures in each single ga each game. And they're all compatible, as I said. Now, Wrath of a Shardalon. It's more of your classic uh, fantasy tropes, I guess. Nice big dragon miniature in there. Um, and Legend of Dritzt. Yes, Dritzt is how I'm saying it, because I heard R.A. Salvatore say it that way. Again, I guess these uh, heroes are slightly more powerful, but a great mixture of adventures and monsters. And with the advent of 5th edition came the campaign system, starting with Temple of Elemental Evil. So you can level up your characters uh, through the different adventures. You don't just, when you roll the natural 20, if you've got 5 XP, you can cash it in to turn to level 2. It doesn't work like that. You can boost your characters throughout your campaign of adventures. 13 adventures or so again. Loads of monsters. And um, yeah, you've got the campaign system with this. And... Finally, Waterdeep. Again, this also has the campaign system. I do not have Tomb of Annihilation because I'm not particularly... I've not been sold on that. I'm not too bothered about the heroes. I'm not too bothered about the monsters and the miniatures. So um, I've just got um, of the 5th edition updated ones with the campaign system. I've just got Waterdeep and Tomb of Temple of Elemental Evil. So, um, fantastic. I, I love this system. The only two of the fairly big box games I'm going to mention are this. Arena of the Planeswalkers. It was about £12. And it contains so many miniatures, which I'm, a lot of these are, are missing because I've painted them. And they are in a, a box just over there. And uh, one of the uh, planeswalkers themselves is going to be one of the villains in my game. So loads of miniatures for 12 quid. It's ridiculous. And uh, all these things. There's a dice. These funky little cubes and a d20 and little plastic scenery bits. And and these scenery bits. Loads of those. Well, about, how many is there? About six or so. Yeah, it's it's just ridiculous for twelve quid to get all that. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, it's mainly mainly the miniatures and the scenery I was after. <laughs> it wasn't the wasn't the game itself. Because obviously it's not so lovable. I wouldn't have thought. And the final game I want to mention is my mate Susie, as I mentioned before, gave me her old copy of Hero Quest. So it's got all everything apart from the miniatures. So all the cards, all the the board, the, the uh, scenery, the dice. So um, that's your lot. That is all my big box games. Um, the final part of this series will be about role playing games. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm sorry I haven't got Gloomhaven or anything like that. So thanks a lot.